Scene 65, take one. My name is Irving Granis. I first came to downtown Los Angeles since I was born in Los Angeles in the 1940s. So I've been coming down here since then. In 1990, I started a documentary project called Urban Wilderness, Chaos Transformed, that was centered mostly in San Francisco's Chinatown and New York City, Lower Manhattan. And it was based on graffiti, found objects. I really like to get into my images very intimately. I like to get close up. And what I try to do is within the overall framework of the art that's presented, I try to create a new work of art. And one of my rules of photography was that I would never touch or tamper with anything on the wall. Even if there was something that I would like ripped a little more, my rule was I will not touch it no matter what. It had to be the way it presented itself to me. Los Angeles is primarily a driving city, so people don't walk around in Los Angeles as much as they do in New York or in San Francisco's Chinatown, and therefore they don't interact with the streets as much. Well, after I finished the New York series, which was about a 10-year series, I started looking more intently in Los Angeles. And one day, about eight to ten years ago, it was just driving around downtown, and then I saw on Traction the neon place. And so I stopped, and then I walked around the area and found the American Hotel wall. And I said, oh my God, this is like Wonderland. And it was almost an instantaneous love affair between me and the wall. It was just alive with beauty, filled with every kind of art, pastovers, handwriting on the wall. And I shot it like hell that day. And from then on, I kept coming back regularly. There was a time when I was coming three, four times a week because the wall was changing so quickly. Overnight, it could become a completely different wall. So that to miss a few days was to miss progressions in the change. And I like to capture in my camera progressions in the change. I like to put the camera in roughly the same spot and take the same picture, but with a completely different wall there. You wouldn't recognize the wall between visit one and maybe visit three if you showed just two pictures of it. So I have images going from the moment an image is up to the point where its last shreds were there, from full bloom to almost completely gone. I'm really looking for the image within an image under an image that is starting to show just a little bit. I'm not that interested in just posters on a wall that don't have overlap. I want images that are layered on top of each other, that demonstrate an interaction between people on the street. Great if people write on the image or leave messages on the image. That's what really attracts me. And the American Hotel has always had incredible layering. It's like a living organism that changed over time and that was irresistible to me. I've wandered virtually every street of downtown, but there is nothing that I've been able to find that comes close to the American Hotel in terms of richness. I knew from the looks of the building that it had to have an incredible history and tale to it, but I knew nothing about the hotel or even that it was called the American Hotel. Mine was totally a solitary return to a Mecca that I found visually fascinating without knowing any of the history. When I first started shooting here, though, there was a sign on the Hewitt Street front that uh, talk about Bloom's Market. And I started to ask about that, and I heard it was a, quite a famous market down here, but it was only later that I started to learn how rich it's been. And I kicked myself forever for not having discovered Al's Bar, because I would have gone completely nuts photographing Al's Bar 
and I would have been compelled to hang out there probably more than was healthy for me. <laughs> but it depressed me, me when I saw that the ownership of this hotel had changed, and one day there were big for rent signs out. That means the rent must be going up. People probably have to move out, and it's what I saw happen in the Soho area of New York, which now is extremely upscale. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, I think this area is going to be very upscale and is going to attract people from the west side who've never come to this part of town in their life. The area is losing its character, and it's quickly becoming a very in area. Many more restaurants, more tourists down here, less real people who live down here. In the series of urban wilderness that I did in the Soho, Tribeca, Lower East Side areas of New York, I've seen the area completely disappear. All the character and richness that I was able to find there in the 90s just doesn't exist anymore. Once the restaurants and bars start coming in, as they have here, artists can no longer afford the space. And it's no longer really exclusively an artist's area. And so they will always find another area. Where it is, I don't know. But I think this area, as a true artist's area, is cooked. I wish I were wrong. I mourn for the spirit of the area that I just missed in terms of Al's Bar, and I mourn in terms of the area that I've seen slowly change over the years that I've been shooting it. Progress is not progress in, in my book. Ugly is more pretty than pretty. Cut.